What's up guys, during a TVZ tutorial, uh, Terran against Zerg between Innovation and True played at Intel Extreme Masters Katowice, I was actually on the an analysis on the laptop for this and pointed out the big important fights that Innovation took very well, I think, on this map that uh, brought him the win. Todd, uh, you had Innovation versus True, how did it go? Uh, we. I want to show a moment in the game, like he kind of went as you expected, uh, as you would expect it, I want to say, with innovation just powering through. So he's doing a pre seven minutes, 17 Marines and two tanks that is boosted across the map timing. I believe actually that was kind of went around when we jumped into the game, which is really the turning point here. This is the third base of true. If he can kind of break that and start doing damage, this would be very good for innovation. He had a Reaper guarding that gold base on the other side here. So look how well he sets up here. He puts those two tanks here, and then this is the range of the tanks. So the goal will be to just kind of start on pulling back as soon as True engages into him. He knows that there's going to be banings, clearly. Pulls back perfectly, picks up, and every single time he does that, he gets some better trades. And from there, Innovation just started on pulling further and further ahead. And I love how the two medivacs made that possible. We're going to analyze the lead-up to this fight and how to execute the build order... Uh as well as innovation, if that's even possible, without being a computer or a machine. So let's have a look. And just like usual, we're going to be writing down a lot of stuff. Already uh, a shout out to give to Hero Marine for advising me to do this replay as analysis. And giving me some pointers as well, which I will talk about in a minute. So 13 out of 15, rally CC to ramp. For depot, I'm not going to write start depot, like obviously if you rally it there, that's to start a depot. <clears throat> and one thing that I don't mention usually in my tutorials, but that uh, I expect you guys to know and that is quite obvious, is that you make SCVs basically continuously. If you have to cut SCVs for something, it's to make a building. And that's what I'll write. So the rest of the time you're basically making SCVs very continuously, or when you're finally cutting for a certain thing, then I'll write that down. So I take a lot of notes, and usually, I, actually, I don't, have I done a turn uh, tutorial? I think I mostly focus on Protoss usually, so if if for some of you turn players, it's the first time that you're here. I take a lot of notes on the build order, basically to make sure you can try and reproduce the, the build order as well as the pro player. You can take your own notes, or if you like mine and off, I recommend either printing them or having them up on your second monitor, studying them a lot before you actually play. Try to make this build order and reproduce it as well against the computer, even if you want. You don't even have to try it immediately on the ladder. Additional supply. And I'm going to try to make uh, you guys match some of those good timings that uh, those players actually reach. So on 16 out of 23, start racks with enough room for reactor. If he was down there, uh, it, like you wouldn't even have to worry about it because you would have made it here between the depot and then the reactor will come here, but up there, if you are on the on the top spot, you need to make it here. And then gas immediately after. On 16 as well. Then gas. When I write something like that, it's important that you do both at 16. Like if gas was at 17, I would have moved, I would have put 17 out of 23 gas. And I, I always say gas because it's simpler as well. I'm not gonna say uh, refinery, assimilator, extractor, like. There's no need for that. Just simplify it, say gas. SCV ready. So behind it's just gonna be SCVs in the start. I think for this kind of game, which only when I go up to like the seventh minute and take a lot of notes and pointers, but we don't wanna overdo it either. So saturate gas. Um Saturate gas with three. And then that's when the orbital command was gonna come in. I feel like the notes thing is gonna be extremely long for this replay because there's so many to take. So I'm gonna try to keep it simple, put the important stuff. Like it feels like everything is important, obviously. Um, let's see. There's a particular order here. As the bear, as the racks finish it, 
it lines up pretty well with when that finishes. Oh yeah, both. Okay. When Rax finishes, start Reaper plus Orbital. <clears throat> it's pretty crazy. Nothing's happening here for a while as well after that. Send SCV that builds Rax. I feel like I almost should write that differently. Let me see. <clears throat> SCV that makes racks rallied to expo for CC. Start Reaper plus Orbital. Then makes, makes second CC. Okay, I think that's the good way to write it, I guess. Overwolf app, I don't know what that is. Something to show text on top of the game. I could definitely look into that. Like right now, I'm, I'm using the cheap TXT file. Which works good enough, to be honest. 20 out of 23, second depot. Second depot at ramp. It's definitely very simplified. Uh... Command center upgrade. Okay, I'll look into it later, uh, Nin. Maybe tweet to me with the name of the program and the link so I can remember after the stream. Because otherwise, uh, I'm going to forget about it, very likely. Uh, 23 out of... Okay, well... 23 out of 23. Actually, that was 22, I think, that he rallied. I'm going to call back a little bit. That he rallied the CC. Command Let's see. Upgrade. 21. Yeah, 22. 22 out of 23. Rally main CC to ramp. Actually, rally SCV. Coming out to ramp for factory. I think all these details are pretty important, as much as I want to simplify, because that's what makes the build so smooth. I didn't write when he should start the marine, god damn it. I ah, write after Reaper. So that's second depot at ramp. Command center up Immediately mule, mule SCV. And then Q marine. Second depot at ramp. Mule plus SCV, Q Marine on barracks. I think that's that fits on the same line, so we might as well write it. The Grim Reaper has arrived. Do the pros have flowcharts of SCV how the builds ready. link, like in BJJ? I'm not sure what you mean, but I think they they study with replays and stuff, and most of it is mental. I don't think many pros take notes like this. I just rely on a lot of games and uh, cerebral thoughts. Uh, 23 out of 31. Second gas. Mm, I will think about how to write down what the Reaper does. Like usually I think you will send it around the natural first, then check for a third. Uh, that was reactor 24. Yeah. SCV ready. And then I, I'm guessing he's gonna saturate his second gas pretty fast after that. <sighs> Woo! That was close. To check natural. I'm going to write that because it's very important. If you have your Reaper across the map already, you don't need to look at it while it's going there. But as soon as it arrives, you have to check what's uh, on the natural and don't get surrounded like this. Because that was almost like an absolute disaster. Against somebody like true, you can lose your Reaper. Um, saturate second gas. I'm guessing it's going to be straight, obviously, second orbital. He escaped with the Reaper, which is good. Saturate second gas. Get second orbital. When uh, when facto finishes, swap with barracks and make starport. SCV ready. 
add-on complete. 22, 23, first 100 gas go for factory. Yeah, I wrote that, no? I shouldn't read chat. You're making me confused. Unless you corrected me. Yeah. 22 out of 23. Rally SCV coming out to ramp for factory. It's right there. Start double Hellion. So some of the notes that uh, Herman gave me was that you make four to six Hellions and then you get a tech lab on your factory. So that's something to keep in mind with this build order. And then the goal is going to be to go for a third command center into Steam Pack as well before you add barracks and uh, eBay's for upgrades. That one Marine stays there on patrol. The Reaper is still kind of checking for third. The, this Marine is pretty cool because he prevents an Overlord from getting into the main. So make sure you don't leave it here in the middle of your natural. Leave it in the main base. If you get attacked, you can raise the wall. Mm. Start double Hellion. I think from there, maybe we should take some general notes. I'm going to keep playing. Okay, no, actually, I guess we'll take a note on the... Third and fourth Hellion and the Medivac as well. So start double Hellion here. And then they will complete. <clears throat> 38 out of 46. After first two Hellions are out. Make two more and start medivac. So basically these Hellions will line up pretty well with when the medivac is out and the goal is going to be to drop four Hellions to do some drone damage. The Reaper across the map, I love that he's still being active, trying to check on that third base. And then we'll see when he quits Hellions. I'm guessing Steam Pack is going to be uh, started as well pretty quickly here. I think if you go for six Hellions, you can kind of rejoin the first four, but you don't have to. So Steam Pack at 44 out of 54. I didn't write down the last depot. Actually, not, not the one before that. Let me see. Where were we? I think it's important to write these because if I had to be a loader without the depot, some people will not make them. So 38 out of 46. After first two Hellion are out. Make two more and start medivac. Okay. Plus plus one depot at ramp. Plus one depot at natural, which goes without saying it's at the ramp. I want to make sure I don't forget one depot here. I don't want some some players to uh, message me with hate comments. You forgot to list the depot. We were supply blocked. And short uh, 42 out of 46. One more depot at natural ramp. The Terran should know to constantly build depot with one SCV. It's just a Terran thing. Well, keep in mind this is this build order is uh, for all leagues. I really want everybody to benefit from this. I don't want just the masters and above. So I don't want to uh, to make it too hard. I think it's better to list everything. I want somebody to have a paper in front of them, maybe look at it, try to execute the build like two, three times against the computer and then they can do it perfectly. So I think that was around 45-ish. Yeah. Maybe even 40. Uh, I would get the exact number. I think it's the better way to do it. So on the Steam Pack. Yeah, 44 to 46. Yeah. So, 44 out of 46, Steam Pack starts. Eat some hell. I love watching this kind of build order and studying them. Everything's so clean. Ready for dust off. Uh, okay. 
I'm going to write that. Keep Hellions at natural ramp. 44 to 46 team pack starts. Medivac out. Ignite after. Ah, uh, yeah. I almost want to write just boost. Ignite after burners towards Hellions. Pick up all four. And go across map. And now it's going to be when the third CC starts. Well, actually, okay. Okay, I want to write the, the right order, so I keep having to go back. So after he finished the four Hellions, he swapped directly for a tech lab. And that was also something that Hiromain mentioned to me, where if you feel like there might be a Roach attack coming, you can actually get a tank here behind this. So 45 out of 54. Swap factory. Um, fly factory to make uh, to add tech lab. Whew, English is hard. I love how he's keeping this overload out as well. And this is usually the timing you want to scout if there is an all in coming. So, what Hermione told me about this is that all your scouting is done <coughs> with the Reaper or Reaper plus two Hellions. But in this case, Innovations playing against True, so Ling, counterattacks and all-ins were very likely. And I like that. He kept the Hellions at home. I think that's really cool because if he had been Ling attacked, which I think might happen in any league, even at the highest of levels, having those guys back at home will help you a lot. So as much as he didn't get attacked that game, he was extra safe. So it's, that's for the Reaper to do the scouting. And Hiromarine added that um, you scout with your Reaper as much as you can. In case you're uncertain, you can use one scan at the natural or sacrifice the Reaper to see the saturation of the third base. Look where this guy is going. So that's going to be for the Reaper to kind of get that confirmation of whether there's a third base and what the saturation there is exactly. Then 47 out of 62 third CC. While the medivac obviously heads across the map. Now it checks the third base. It's kind of like a late timing. I mean, it's not like a super fast third, but it's it's standard, right? Like it's not like Technically, I guess True could be doing a two base, but it'd be a very late two base. Like by now, most attacks that he would have gone for would already be headed across the map. Okay, so um, now things go very fast. I need to get everything right. By the way, this sounds very quiet for me. Is it also for you guys? I'm going to raise it a little bit. Hopefully, I don't blow your eardrums. All right. So after steam pack, he gets a reactor on the starboard. So it's only one. Like he could, you could actually get a Viking with this, if you wanted to. Like because he gets four Hellions, I think it's almost always better to get a. I mean, technically, if you if you have four Hellions, you could stand here at the front and kill Cryptumers, but it's harder, I feel, to do than this. I almost like this better, but then again, I'm not a Terran player. So, sound is unchecked. No, no, no. It's I hear I hear the sound. It's just when I pause, it doesn't keep on playing. For some reason but yeah uh go for the main base here with the hellions and behind this if you want before you add a reactor to your starport you could actually get a viking if you want to kill the overlords around your base a cheeky port viking nobody minds obviously you're gonna keep 16 uh, mineral in main oh i didn't write down the second gas i guess i'm gonna go back because that's no i did never mind 23 out of 31 obviously you saturate it as soon as it's up Oh, I'm out of yeah. my mind, guys. Terrorin with the sub, thank you very much. Welcome to you, mate. So, we're going to go back and write everything in order here because we don't want to miss anything. So, it's 
get the tech lab on the CC, uh, on the factory, sorry, and start marine production. Start marine production, maybe like out there. Then start third CC. I want to see when that starts. And and reactor on starport. And then that's when the racks are going to go down. And then shortly after that, the e-base. Guys, I feel like even I could do this build now. Honestly, I'd be terrible at it. Saw you on Nate's stream last night. Don't know why I didn't sub sooner. Thank you for stream, my dude. Thank you very much, Darwin, again. And a hello, Niffy Nathan. Okay, so 50 out of 62, which is, by the way, like this time, this is when your factor just finished. So I'm not going to write that down because I already wrote that you should scout with your Reaper. But if for some reason, right now, Innovation had scouted a bunch of units that are across the map or even a lot of, I don't know, roaches, whatever. If you see a bunch of roaches here, you should be on high alert and you should start a tank, I think, no matter what. Like now in this situation, he might still start a tank. Like we'll see. He might prioritize something else. It's all about like obviously. If you go there and you see like 15 drones transferring to that base, you should be like, okay, I don't need a tank. I'm actually gonna get double eBay right now. But if you see units, you might be more inclined to get that. So just adapt. So 50 out of 62. He's gonna start one more racks and then one more. Actually, he starts just the one for now. And then one more. Okay. 50 out of 62 racks on empty reactor. And then one more. What am I doing? Stay on innovation view. Isn't there something to make the music continue all the time? Yeah, continuous music. So why does it stop when I pause? But that's too that's too loud now. I, I had this unchecked for some reason. Let me know if this the game sound is too loud, guys. Okay. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I call all that. It's me or it's not me now. I call all that. Okay, so 55 out of 70. Actually, I didn't list the last depot. I'm gonna make sure I catch that. Like I said, we're gonna get the order perfect of everything. Not one single thing will be missed. So what did I write? CC, reactor on starport. Add on. And then the two racks. Oh, actually. Okay. Racks on empty reactor. Depot at wall. And then one more racks. It's the innovation build. Uh, SCV production in the meantime. Can I continue? Um, I'm, I mean, Marine, sorry. You, you just get a few here and there. Don't overdo it. And then at 55... I guess that's at the end of the... You know what? I'm even gonna go back one more time. Check out exactly when he pays attention to those pesky little hellions. Because that comes into play. I think it's very important. If you can build this exact rhythm... Add on. So obviously, like for a little time here, it's not going to be macroing. He starts a bunch of stuff at home. That's why right now he's only queuing Marines and SCVs. That's because he's macroing this at home. You see, he has this selected. 55 out of 70. Aras with Hellions without over committing. Then he leaves. Boom, out of this. Kill, so, kill a bunch of Zerglings, force more units, ideally. Get out. Boom! Then start two gas plus two eBay's at Expo. Boom. Well, perfect. Go, go, go. You see, he never made a tank, by the way. But he had the opportunity to choose whether he, he, he had to make one. Go kill some more stuff with Hellions after starting that. <laughs> Why not? Because innovation. Ready. 
Actually, that's pretty sick harass. He got seven drones. That's insane. Like, this is going to put him so far ahead. Honestly, like, he flew, I guess... Okay, so he made he made a reactor earlier. Like, I like this, actually. Hmm. I feel like it's almost too complicated, but it's so good that I still should talk about it. So, here's what happened. This starport wasn't really of any use, because Innovation only had four Marines for the longest time. Like, right now he's on five Marines. So, it's not like he needs two medivacs. So, when the starport finished, what did he do? He didn't say, I'm going to make two medivacs like a noob for my five Marines, so they can be, like, they can have the best healthcare in the world. He flew his starport further and made another add-on. So that when this Rax finishes, he can immediately swap that onto the reactor and already have a reactor. Like, his starport is literally a reactor-making machine right now. This is, this is really cool to see. So, he did start a tank as well with this. I guess he started doing some damage, and usually against somebody like True, you don't have to push him too hard before he finally decides to attack you. So I think I'm going to list that as well. That as soon as the starports finish the uh, reactor, like here he gets out. Yeah, this is right after this. Okay. It lines up pretty well. Obviously, some stuff will be off sync for, um, for players of different level. Right? Like, some of you might do this second attack here after you evacuated the first time and then like your your reactor is not is not even uh, near done because you haven't done the build exactly as innovation did it it's all about prioritization and trying to make it as best as you can so don't don't be too hard on yourself just try to do the build as best as you can and don't really overthink it right even if some of this stuff goes out of order as long as you follow the general idea of this build order and this style i think you'll be all right complete somebody so make new reactor with starport. Get me out of this mess. Then he kills a bunch more stuff. We're still gonna follow everything here. I wanna see if he starts upgrades immediately, but I'm guessing that's the case. And even I'm even gonna write when he saturates the gases, which by the way my text on this on this uh, screen is gonna be basically full. Which we don't mind. Okay, he loses that kind of sloppy there, actually. Okay, 58. Out of 85. Start 1-1. One, one. Upgrades. Saturate. Gases. Start 3rd orbital. He hasn't done it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what you need to do anyway. Get away, Overlord. And then... Yeah, and then swap barracks. Swap the racks to reactor. Ah, I didn't write the tank. Okay. <laughs> Instead of the Pulled Viking, Liberator instead. You could as well, yeah. But then you will have less reactor for your barracks. I think that's what Innovation wanted to prioritize. Let's see when he started that tank. I think because obviously the goal of this build is to propel yourself into a normal game, normal TVZ game, but um, you don't want to like skip on the tank push. I think the tank push is what makes this really strong on this map, on Eastwatch. Okay, just show me when you start a tank. So at 61 out of 70. Before he swapped the third the third racks to the reactor, so and how long after? Oh, actually, that was before that. Wait, how's that possible? Okay, though, so I should move that away. Yeah, saturate gases, start a tank, and then then start third orbital. I guess a different line is okay. He loses that, if you can keep that alive, it's better. Yeah. So 
Start third orbital. Start uh, swap third Rex to a reactor. Actually, okay, maybe yeah. Like this part is confusing right now because it might be a little bit out of sync. Make new reactor with starport. It seems like that finished long before the Rex was added. We're not gonna overthink it. I think we're just gonna keep it listed as is for now. And then. Uh, Get a second tank. You want a piece of me, boy? I'm gonna start writing supply... Supply count, I think. Actually, mm, I'm not sure whether I should or not. What do you guys think? Because it feels like it would be way too out of sync a lot of the time. I'll write them, but don't overread it, I would say. So, 61. Well, like, for example, for some people it's gonna be 55, so for some other it's gonna be 70. So 61 out of 85, get a second tank. He added some depots somewhere in there that I missed, I think, maybe? Up, ready to go. And then he starts heavy marine production. Heavy marine production. And... Double medivac. Add on. Complete. Research. Complete. Complete. And then from there, I'm gonna write that. It's mostly for the lower league players, but it kind of applies for everybody. Like, this is really the point in the game where you just landed your third mule. You have a crazy amount of SCVs. You're gonna have an insane income. It's the time you wanna start making supply depot in bunches. So, not just one. Make like two, three. Start making supply depot. In multiples. Boom. SCV ready. Ready to roll out. Okay, so second tank is out. Obviously, you need to be making a lot of marines here with this. And yeah, the goal is, as soon as those two, those two medivacs come out... I like that, by the way. Hmm, okay. I should list that. Kill Rock Tower at third to protect it. While flying CC there. So second... Uh, or like two medivacs. Oh, where's the other one? Oh, there. Two medivacs, go pick up tanks, then move across map. Start plus two barracks. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna put a supply count. Actually, scan third. I scan zerg third. You wanna have an idea of what the saturation is. So if you scan a zerg third and you see this, you can know a zerg has been droning up heavily. Like nobody will have a million drone like this on their third, and then nothing in the main, and nothing, uh, nothing in the main, nothing in the natural, and have like a million units to kill you. If you see that saturation. Zerg will obviously make a bunch of units from now because they've already built up their economy. We see 18 links. Like, you can kind of guess that. But you're almost happy that you see this many units because you know that you can... Like, if you scan this third base and there's zero drones... Okay, start building a wall of uh, planetary fortresses here because the attack's coming, basically. So when you scan this and you see this many drones, it might look scary because the Zerg has built up his economy, but don't be scared because you're going to be killing it in one second, especially on this map and with the siege that innovation does. So he sends everything that he has across the map with the marines on the ground. I didn't... Okay. I'm gonna go back a bunch because I wanna make sure I grab when he starts Complete. combat shield if it's as soon as... Uh, okay. So it was 73. And uh, before he went to kill the... Actually, no. Did he? No, he didn't take them out yet. 73. I'm gonna put it before the depot. Out of 85, start combat shield when steam finishes. Boom. Why not game time makes less sense. Um, actually, game time is also very easy to go completely off. It's very hard. If 
like my advice for you if you want game time is to rewatch this tutorial and take the same notes as me but instead of the timers uh, instead of the supply you write the timers you can definitely do that everybody is str strongly encouraged to take your own notes I got terrible handwriting which doesn't apply here because I'm writing with the keyboards but it's still kind of terrible in the way that like you know I'm the I'm the one that calls gases gas with a Z and stuff like if you want if you want to write this tutorial your own way do not hesitate to do so I'm just here to give pointers of like what started when but if you guys want to do it your own way I definitely uh, advise doing it this is a lot more complicated than the Protoss one hey it's Terran Terran builds have like a lot of swap in between stuff Okay, now I just want to see, let's see when he moves across the map. Okay, now I already listed that, but the armor is what's one of the notes we should take. I think it's it should be pretty soon. It's actually nice to see how you go about this, Todd. You really learned a lot of things happen at the same time and show what a complex and beautiful game SC2 is. Yeah, it's so clean. Like the build is very clean. So he scans the third base. After starting two more barracks, which is very important, you want to keep up with the uh, with your economy. Keep in mind, innovation has those has done this build so many times that he probably has similar notes in his head to what I did here. So as he head across the map now, he has the two more barracks. Show me when the, when that armory goes down, you know. Okay, now. Hmm, I'm not sure how to write it down. Actually, it lines up pretty well. When 1-1 one, one is at, let's say, 70% each. A hundred out of 101. When 1-1 one, one upgrade is at... Is at... 70% start armory because it's gonna line up very well basically Ready. I'm gonna do that conclusion thank you for the suggestion so now it gets there and this is really like where it gets super sick for me I'm gonna keep an eye on when uh, it starts the factory you wanna set up your tanks here Hit a perfect scan to not only kill the creep tumors here, to kind of push the creep back up to here the edge, so that you can stay here with your marines and pull back every time. But also, this is going to allow you to see what units could be coming in and attacking you. Coming in from behind, you don't really worry about it. Like, obviously, this is a timing where the Zerg is going to be relying almost exclusively on Ling and Bane, unless they are playing a Roach style, but even against a Roach style, you're kind of fine. If they come in from behind, then you're not worried about Bane Ling. So all you have to do is cover the tanks with the marines. But a lot of the time, Zergs will have droned up a lot, so their unit will be coming in from here and like kind of late. So the goal is to stand here with the units, with the marines, shoot that hatchery, force the Zerg units to come into you, and then you pull back into this tank area, which is here, like the limits. This is pretty much what innovation wants to do. That's why it doesn't waste any time. Like the tanks are always gonna stay there, but the marines, they go forward. They force the Zerg to attack almost immediately. Banes came in? No problem. He even left one marine. He was like, blow me up, please. Don't be cost effective. And in the meantime, what is he doing? Rallying new SCVs okay. to the third base, starting a lot of supply depot, keeping up with his production. And the new barracks, by the way, they just finished. Boom. Reactors. So. While sieging, keep making SCVs plus depots. And then add reactors to your two new racks now if I take any notes they will be just general notes but this is the attack that really puts innovation super far ahead it's about to bit uh, it's about to have him connect boom immediately pulls back correctly not even one tank will die look at his beast look at him nine and ten kills two sergeants the Marines keep going to town and by the way, Complete. notice something? Combat shield finished now. Complete. These guys are even, most be even more beastly. 1-1 one, one finished. So obviously the supply right now is almost me telling. So just as a general rule of thumb, 
I'm going to add what follows, but I'm not going to put supply or timer anymore. So let's just write start 2 2 when 1 1 is finished. Boom. I'm not going to write the. Actually, hmm, okay. Keep making lots of Marines plus Medivacs and tanks. That's the composition you want to play on this map. So as you can keep on sieging, especially because he's doing so well already. So the 2-2 is on now on the way. He's still making a CV scan at 3x3, not really missing a bit. I would say a good timing, I'm not going to write that down, but a good timing to take your gases on your third is when you have already got a little bit of, like if you have like, you know, three SCVs here on the minerals, don't don't take the two gases. But by the time you have like 10 to 16-ish, you already should be taking those refineries. And he kept 16 in the main, 16 in the natural and build that up here. And now he should be saturating that very soon. Up, ready to go. Sergeant and Sergeant, 13 and 12 kills. And guess what? Innovation is not overextending. He could definitely keep on attacking with his Marines and pull them back. But look at his army. It's not that scary anymore compared to the production of the Zerg. Like he knows that the Zerg will be getting this many Bane links, which against this army will do very well. The links could come in from behind. The Zerg will always try to set up from behind. So what does he do? He waits for the reinforcements to be there. That is so smart, especially with tanks. The more tanks he can add against this, the better. Like we saw what innovation can do with some of that good micro. Picking up the units, pissing the Marines. So now immediately he realized this is going to come in. Starts attacking again. He sees those buildings morphing. He's almost happy to see that. Keep in mind, Truth's doing something very good with his counter attack here. I would recommend for you guys that if you think it's going to be very hard for you to siege and at the same time defend, don't hesitate in getting a bunker. Get a bunch of depot around it, get a bunker, put four marines in it. You're almost never going to have to look at this base ever again. Like, this many links come, a bunker surrounded by depot is going to kill all of them. Bay links come in, they're going to blow up the bunker. You're going to replace it and the Zerg will not have been cost effective. And he maybe won't even have enough back at home to defend because he will, send a, he will have sent bay links across the map. So now it's something that innovation has to worry about. He's going to have to send in reinforcements. And I want to write down the timing on that second factory. At second factor, actually, wait, I think he was about to. Yeah, after he mess, after saturating gases on third, I think that's about a, a right timing for that. So now, what True is hoping for is that innovation will be looking at back at home. Innovation, by the way, did something important. He's sieging this base very effectively. He wants to know what's where uh, if there is a gold base, maybe. Because like sometimes Zergs, they think they're going to lose this base. They're like, okay, I'll just take the gold base and transfer all drones here. He knows there is a base here. He saw the creep. But he still wants to know if he's getting tricked into forgetting about the potential gold base. Because it's always going to be a threat. And if you kill this base, you can almost always expect that the one base, the Zergs will revert. Like if you kill this one, you can basically kill this one. So what does he do? He's going to scan that. And I want to show you guys with his view. Alright Chris, I'll post the video on YouTube later so you can check it with a delay. Actually it's not going to be much longer Chris if you can wait a little bit more for the giveaway. But I understand if you have to go to bed. So he scans the gold base, sees that he's not there. And innovation, where is he looking? He's looking at home to send marines into that third base. Goes back here, he's lost a lot of units. So that was very well done by True. Not every Zerg that you play against will be good enough to be able to do that. That was extremely well done by True. That definitely uh, brought him a little bit back in the game. He killed 15 SCVs actually. That's the reason he can stay a lot longer in the game, even though he was doing really bad initially. So just with a little run by like this across the map, and now into the natural. Look at innovation. Every time he looks away, there could be banings connecting onto his army. He still got a truckload of units there. Eventually he defends here with the reinforcements, keeps up with his production. And if he hadn't lost all the SCVs that he lost, he might already be getting a 4cc. Maybe like a 4cc here to fly into a new base there or even here. See, he already has the SCV. So now that he's cleaned up that base, he's like, oh wait, let me find the next one. And right now, even if, without scanning the gold base, you, you should know that that gold base is over there. So what does he do? Takes out the one other base that's pretty important. I like that these medivacs, by the way, were a little bit forward. Can I keep an eye on the Zerg? 
Second factory will obviously get a, a tech lab that's for tanks. He scans like what's being made and how many units. And again, right now, innovation, he knows. Like this, he hasn't seen it, but he knows. Trust me. Doesn't even need to scan. I love that depot, by the way. Definitely, if you take that third base after you've taken down these rocks, make a depot there, because you can see if a Zerg is looking to try and attack there. Look at this. Boom! One HP. Broodlings coming in. That gets saved a lot. That was actually, these guys lasted forever. I can't believe they managed to head there. But a nice little save. If, if you can save three tanks like this, you can be pretty happy. You're doing something right. What does he get, by the way? Ship plating. So he wants to uh, reinforce the armor of his tanks instead of the damage. That's interesting. He wants them to uh, last okay. longer. Additional mm. supply depots required. Vehicle and ship plating. Not sure. I Actually, I feel like if you're going to go for a lot of tanks, usually we would see attack. So it's kind of interesting that he does that. I'm not going to pretend I know exactly why, but if innovation does it, I definitely uh, would advise trying it out for yourselves. I think I might have missed it. Did he start a CC here and it got cancelled? In any case, I would say like when you're well saturated on three bases and like your, your army is not getting straight murdered all the time, start a full CC. Don't be greedy. Don't make it on location. You could make it here completely safe, fly it there and then get an orbital. So that's what innovation does and I love that. After killing that one base, what does he do? He comes down here and he's going to lock True out of his gold base. True relies almost exclusively on Bailings and Links. Like now we finally see him hide Hydralisk. What does he do? He locks him out. That's going to bail him a lot of time. Rejoins with the rest of his army. A cheeky little F2. And actually it's not F2. He's, he's got everything good. I'm just joking. But yeah, he, all he can do now is... All he has to do is push with a lot of his units and this is going to hurt. It's pretty crazy actually what he's able to make with just 5 racks. True tries to come in from behind, be cheeky with uh, some Zerglings and Banes, gets shut down, like not good trades at all. And Innovation, by the way, he was so fed up of being Supply Block, what did he do? He spammed Supply Depot, he's already out of 200 now. I guess that Orbital might have helped as well. Now he goes for the gold base. Keep in mind, this is still locked and he even sees that. He kept the tank here. He's slow sieging this, pre-splitting. If you pre-split like this, you don't even need to group any, uh, to uh, to worry too much on micro anymore. All you have to do is stim. Make sure you stay speeded. True's going for a full counter attack. He's trying to provoke a huge mistake from Innovation right now, but Innovation is not going to flinch. He just kind of pulls that back. Uh, that tank was actually blocking those SCVs from coming out. That's funny. Upgrade. And right now it would be very easy to like get over eager, like you're doing very well and drop everything into the main base, but I would say stay patient, stay off creep. You don't want to throw away games. We see a lot of players throw away games, so I love that Innovation Scanna is like, you know what? I'm doing well, I'm gonna pull back, regroup, attack with my entire army, take a fourth, take a fifth. What are you gonna do? There's nothing you can do. Start 3-3. Three, three. I'm not gonna write that on the, on the rest of the text because I feel like it's kind of obvious. But yeah, start 3-3. Three, three. And I love that he goes into Liberators, by the way. You see how many Medivacs he has? He cut at around 8. 8 Medivacs, you can go into Liberators from there. If you have 8 decently healthy Medivacs. I'm going to write that as well. When you have 8 healthy Medivacs, go into Liberators. When you are well saturated on 3 bases, make a CC on high ground to... Planetary Gold Base. I hope that's not too vague. And yeah, basically, uh, I'll just fast forward to the killing blow here. It's just a push of Doom. I love how he gets the towers as well back at home. Sensor, sensor tower. He could have actually done a sick move here. Pull back with everything and kill these rocks. But uh, true, he does the biggest cleanup of the game that he can. But there's still so much left over. Like, I mean, Innovation is in full script machine mode right now. Production is on top. He's got his, his vehicle plating, actually. That's super interesting. I wish Terran could tell me here. What exactly is the thought process behind this? He even goes into a Ghost Academy. He's like, you know what? Let me cover all of my bases. Fifth base. With the fourth there. A couple units get caught. Doesn't even get... Like, he's got 100 supply more. All he has to do is do a move and finish it. 
Yeah, his production was on point. I love, by the way, also that innovation. He gets Marines out of these four barracks, but he always squeezes in one Marauder or two from this one to kind of tank some banings. You see, his production is very consistent. And by the way, he groups all of his barracks together, but his factory is separately. And I kind of like that as well. Not everybody does it like that. I would say, when you're well established on a fourth base and then potentially a fifth, add three more racks, which usually you will make outside of your natural. Let me see. When, when well set up on four, five bases, add plus three racks. And ghosts. It depends on the flow of the game as well, obviously. If the Zerg was going into Broodlords, I would say and you scout it and you're not able to do uh, any, as much damage as you want, definitely drop a second starport and go for Vikings. But this is a game where True has just been stuck on Lair the entire game. Look at his main base, he's still a Lair. She plating is really good with Liberators, yeah. It's a benefit kind of everything, yeah, I know. I just thought that if you're gonna make this many tanks, usually it's good to get uh, weapons. But in this case, Innovation knows better what he's doing than me, I'm sure. So yeah, just showing you guys the last few moments. I think that's pretty much it here. I did what I could. Again, I'm not a turn player, but this was definitely a delight to uh, make a tutorial out of this game because innovation's just a machine. Again, he's, he's earned his nickname. His production was insane. His build order is really good. Everything lines up perfectly. He didn't nuke himself here like he did in the warm-up for the Intellectual Masters. He even came back home here to clean up everything, so... Again, guys, let me know uh, in the comments how it goes for you. I would definitely recommend trying this out against a computer by yourself. Don't kill him too fast if uh, you're doing well. Just try to go up to three, four, five bases and follow all these steps. If you can do this really well, I'm sure you can use that on the ladder as well and do very well with it. Obviously, this is a very, very long text with a lot of stuff to take in and remember. So study it even when you're not playing. Try to remember as much of it as you can. If you can master that, then you'll be as uh, maybe as good as uh, Innovation. And if not, just watch the previous tutorial and switch to Protoss because that's, that's just much easier. Thank you, guys. And see you next time.